Welcome everyone to another short update. I honestly did not expect to have a Spark update so quickly. Actually, I already packed it away in some card box as it was not my topmost priority. I actually wanted to continue with other things. Encouraged by the YouTube comments, I took another look on this and I found out one thing was that I had the memory modules here in the first two slots and apparently the supported configuration are then only here in this third and not second slot. However, this didn't make a difference. Actually, right now I just for the test run it here with the second ZIM in the fourth slot and even this works now. So this was apparently not a problem. However, you should be aware that Sun's officially supported memory configuration are slightly different and not the first two slots, but the first and the third, for example, and then filling this next and this next. I'm not really sure if this has a technical reason, because as you can see, all of these combinations work for me. Now, at least in retrospect, the problem is something else. And I will also move this module back in the third slot, just in case I'm not sure if they use memory interleaving or something. Theoretically, we could benchmark this in the future. However, the real problem appears to be the Sun graphics. Even with this memory changed in any configuration, I still could not get further and the machine was stuck, not reacting to anything. I already again wanted to give up because even my patience and waste of time has limits. But then I accidentally stumbled over a comment somewhere on some side mentioning that because I was already thinking to remove the, the socketed Sun GX chip here and see what happens then if I then get working console after the self-test or something, but before risking to destroy this chip module here, I stumbled over the command mentioning that you could add other alternative frame buffer by simply plugging it into the SPA slot. I did not try this because first of all I do not want to risk destroying so many of my rare things here and second of all I thought this integrated frame buffer always will be the primary one, the first one. So it turns out after I moved the SBUS graphic here from the SS2 to this. I actually have video output here, surprisingly. However, both are shown in the SBUS slots when booting up. I can show the boot up at the end. So only with this SBUS slot plugged in, I have a working machine working graphics. However, I think maybe it is not stuck. I only thought it's stuck because when I press the tab key on the keyboard, when I thought it's hanging and I don't have any other serial output, which by the way we have there still, and I press the tab key, for example, it's beeping. So this is exactly the same that I get in this combination with no boot device present and being in this um, trying to get network boot thing and I press tab or maybe even in, on the OK prompt of the open firmware, I get uh, the beep. So maybe the machine is very much alive, just there is no graphic output. So either this somehow doesn't work with this adapter and it's using some unsupported video mode because there are three sense pins that define the mode and with this adapter probably having all of them floating on ground or something. I got 1152 by 900 something or so. Maybe this is the reason, maybe with another adapter or sense pin or cable or display there could be output maybe another day I plug in the digital scope and see what's coming out there. But anyway, um, as I have the Spark station and I don't have a case, I will probably store this away. And I have here already a sticker on it, uh, test booted with Serial Prom. I will add there, SBUS graphic did not work last time I saw it. The machine is anyway not fast, the only thing is it has more memory, but I don't have a case for it. Um, the esoteric setup here, by the way, is I have actually a lab power supply feeding here because the external USB power supply does not have enough 12 volt power to spin up the vintage SCSI drive. So I have my lab power supply supporting it with a whopping 12 volt and nearly 500 milliamps. This is why the setup here is a little bit experimental because in contrast to the Sun Spark station board, the Sun IPX board does not have a Molex power connector for the SCSI drive there. This must somehow have been differently wired in the IPX case and setup. So we are really running here. I even have here, so most things are tested. Keyboard is working, mouse is working, um, network is working, Siri port is working, Gazi is working here on this connector. And um, yeah, we have Linux fully booted. Due to less swapping with more memory, it feels just slightly faster. And there you may be able to see it through the reflection. Um, this is slightly different from the Spark Station 2, which had the Cypress. This is identified as Fujitsu or Vitek power up and on chip FPU, which this is a Vitek with on chip FPU. 
However, the Vitek has slightly less hardware MMU context in this sliding register window thing. So with heavy multitasking, the performance could be slightly less. However, I read the Linux kernel is not making the most efficient use of this anyway. And last but not least, I already prepared here the entry for the IPX for our T2 hardware listing. I updated the text slightly and the CPU ID information. And now we are going to commit this over the Ethernet AUX physical transmitter here with subversion, because why not? In the meantime, for years, T2 is already so sophisticated that even cross-compiled subversion works, which is already quite a complex program with Apache runtime and, and such. So, this changes are indeed subversion committed from a Sun IPX over the most old-fashioned Ethernet. And uh, yeah, that is totally freaking awesome. I did totally not expect to have this this weekend. Anyway, now, now it's unfortunately time to pack it away because it makes no sense to have this free floating board without case and the maybe not fully working integrated graphics here and the lab power supply for the hard disk and so on. So we'll move the memory over, update the sticker to say it works for the most part except the graphic is questionable and um, then I will unfortunately store this for the foreseeable future. This, by the way, also happens on the Spark station. Sometimes I still need to debug this. Maybe this is something wrong with the software assistant memory management unit thing or the hardware context there in the register window. But I have the gut feeling that it, it may be more the software assisted MMU tree walking there. To show you, as you see, there's currently two Sun Color Graphic 6 slots in there. And now I shortly switch off move the memory modules over and then you see once more a fresh boot and the next time you see the IPX board maybe in some months or years when we take an oscilloscope and probe around there on the sun color graphic thing and um, or maybe potentially first try another adapter cable and display however I, today I tried another display already that also did not show anything so if some simple fix helps then I would expect either an adapter with this mode pins for another video mode potentially. You saw it booted with the SIM in the fourth slot and it boots now with the SIM in the third slot. I leave it in the supported configuration. And um, yeah, that's it for today. I hope you learned something and enjoyed this vintage Sun Unix workstation video. And it would be awesome if you give it a thumbs up and subscribe for all the next videos to come.